Greetings Earthlings, welcome and hello to Geeks Rising. This is my band and I am vlog and today is Monday, November 23rd, 2015. So today is the day that The Expanse launches on the Sci-Fi Network's website and stuff like that and I'm so stoked about it. So I figured, hey, let's go ahead and do a brief history of the network that brought us shows like Battlestar Galactica and movies like Sharknado. So the original idea for an entire network that would focus solely on science fiction came from a communication attorney and his wife in Boca Raton, Florida in 1989. These amazing people who created an amazing channel go by the name of Mitchell Rubenstein and Lori Silvers. This husband and wife duo had the idea in 89 as I said and they originally wanted to launch in 1990 but due to financial constraints and not having funding to start a television network they weren't able to launch in 1990 and it was postponed until 1992 when USA Networks bought the idea and joined together to help them create this science fiction masterpiece channel. At the time that the USA Networks helped launch the Sci-Fi Channel, they were owned by Paramount Pictures and Universal Studios, and these two parent companies saw the Sci-Fi Channel as a perfect avenue to show their stuff like Star Trek and, and Night Gallery. So after all this hoopla, the Sci-Fi Channel launches on September 24th, 1992, and they have a launch party at the Hayden Planetarium in Manhattan, New York, hosted by frickin' Leonard Nimoy. Fun side note, Neil deGrasse Tyson is currently the director of the Hayden Planetarium, and I want to take this moment to tip my non-existent hat to you, sir. Good job for everything you do, NDT. You're awesome. The very first thing that aired on the Sci-Fi Network was a dedication, and it said dedicated to the memories of Isaac Asimov and Gene Roddenberry. Then the very first programming that they showed on the Sci-Fi Network was freaking Star Wars. And I think that's really the only option that this network had. They knew that they had to start off the network by showing Star Wars. So moving forward, in about 1994, it gets really hectic and crazy for about a decade because it starts to get bought and sold and bought and sold and merged and sold and merged and merged and sold and bought and sold sold all sorts of crazy stuff and then finally in 2004 it settles at NBC Universal. Around this time we start to see a change in the programming there's a lot more reality TV that kind of stuff that's wrestling now but they also have Battlestar freaking Galactica one of the greatest TV series ever made. So looking back from the inception of this network September 24th 1992 it was known as the Sci-Fi Network S-C-I-F-I -I, Science Fiction it makes sense. But then in 2009, they make the announcement, hey, we're changing our name. It's no longer gonna be science fiction, S-C-I-F-I. -I. It's going to be S-Y-F-Y. -Y. So from what I understand, this decision to change the name was for marketing and trademark reasons. So I guess NBC Universal really underestimated the intelligence of their viewership. What science fiction viewer or reader would see a sci-fi advertisement and think, oh, that must be the sci-fi advisory board advertising for the genre as a whole. Of course it's going to be for the television station. I actually wrote a song about it. Oh sci-fi channel, why'd you change your name? We all know that it's spelled like that. S-C-I-F-I not S Y F Y. But I think it's time that we can all move forward. It's no big. That's. It's just. It's not a big deal anymore. We can. We can move on, guys. It's okay. That had to be like the worst fake crying ever. That was ridiculous. So regardless of this ridiculous name change, they still make good content. They gave us Eureka. They gave us Battlestar Galactica. They gave us Sharknado. They gave Tara Reid a second chance by being in Sharknado. What a great network this is. And then today, they're launching The Expanse, which I cannot wait to watch. I'm recording this on Sunday, but I can't wait to get off work tomorrow and come home and watch the heck out of this. I'm going to watch it like two or three times probably. I am so stoked, guys. So in the long term, I'm really hoping the Sci-Fi Network gets back to focusing mainly on science fiction. And then when they do that and start making a lot of amazing science fiction shows, they go back and create like an HBO Go app so I can go and subscribe monthly and get all the awesome shows right away. That's the dream world I'm living in, but maybe it's science fiction. I don't know. See what I did? That was dumb. That was really dumb and I'm ashamed of myself. All right, guys. Well, I guess that will do it. I hope you enjoyed the video or learned something or 
course, you're from the Sci-Fi Network. Give me a thumbs up because you guys are awesome and I think you do good work most of the time. If you thought the video sucked, give me a big old thumbs down. And if you want more of these videos, please click subscribe by clicking the cartoon of me in the corner. And I will see you all on Thursday. Thanks for watching. Bye. And don't forget to watch The Expanse. See you later.